So what I want you to do is, if you know any religious folks, this is the video that you want them to see. If you know people who act holier than thou, if they act like, you know, they want to argue about divorce and uh, remarriage and the Sabbath and all that kind of stuff, I want you to just bring them right here and we're going to talk to them real quick because see, people like to take one scripture and then they turn it into a baseball bat that they beat other people with, right? And try to act holier than thou. And this is why you got to have the whole Bible because the whole Bible is going to give balance to your mind. Now, the Bible says in Romans 3 and I, I even believe in Galatians pretty much that nobody get this nobody can be justified by the law nobody I don't care how holy you think you are I don't care how you know perfect you think you are the Bible says my brother my sister that nobody can stand before God and say I've kept the law I've done it right so let me into heaven so think about this when you look at other people for their flaws and their shortcomings Realize that they need grace, but you do too. Realize that Jesus died on one cross for all sin. He didn't say, oh, I got to go die on a bigger cross for the homosexual and, and a small cross for the little white lie you told. No, he died on one cross. He took a beating for all sin. It was an equal price that was paid for all sin. It's humans that have this false perspective that, well, I just told a lie, but you fornicated. I just did this, but you committed adultery. I just did this, but you were gay. But the Bible says that God resists the proud. So think about that for a second, right? People want to talk about divorce, remarriage. And here's the thing. You, I've seen people that grew up in a good situation, good father, good mother, grew up in church their whole life, had everything available to them, resources, money. And then what they'll turn around and do is they'll get married to the right person because they had coaching, they had counseling, and they'll look down at the girl right? Who, who's got a couple of babies, who's been married and been divorced and they'll judge, but they don't realize she was getting molested at three and four years old. And the reality is if you switch places with her and had to walk in your shoes, you would realize it's not because you're so holy and you're so righteous. It was because you protected. And, and maybe if God removed the hedge from around you, you might be on the crack pipe doing a lot worse than what she's doing. Number one. So we got to be very careful when we judge people. All right. People, people get so religious. So even if you say, oh, well, I'm keeping the Sabbath and you're not, I go to church on Saturday. That's the real holy day. There's other areas. According to the Bible it says nobody can be justified by the law. So, okay, you kept the Sabbath. Okay. You've been married to the, uh, that one person your whole life, but the reality is somewhere in your life, the Bible says, and the Bible cannot lie that you are not keeping the law. So you need the same grace as the person that you're attacking. Here's what's so ridiculous about religious folks. When God repents, he removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. So imagine that my two hands were meeting right here and I start moving them in the opposite direction, east and west. Look, you wouldn't even be able to see it in the screen no more because it's gone. That's what happens when you repent. So imagine this, somebody who doesn't know God, doesn't have a relationship with God. And the Bible says that God judges you according to what, what you know, right? So they don't know God, they get married, they get divorced, then they get remarried again. Then somebody witnesses to them and they come to church and they get saved, right? Religious folks will sit there and say, you can't be saved. You can't go to heaven unless you divorce that woman and go back to your old wife. I mean, are you serious? This lets me know that you don't even know God. That's what that lets me know when people have that kind of mentality, because if God forgave the person, then it's gone. It's done. It's blank. They have a fresh start. How can God make a covenant with somebody when he wasn't involved in the process? How can he, he when he made a covenant with Israel, when he made a covenant with Abraham, there was a conversation that was taking place. How can, how can somebody, somebody goes get married and God wasn't included in that stuff. Now, it's different if you know. Now, if you know to do better, right, and you were taught, right, God's going to hold you accountable. Don't just go marry anybody because he hates divorce. But that's what makes God just. That's what makes God righteous. But if you don't remember anything else I said, religious folks, remember this. The Bible, not Marcus Rogers, the Bible says Nobody can be justified by the law. So I don't care if you've got a long old laundry list of everything that you're doing right and everything that I'm doing wrong. And I'm not saying to continue in sin that grace may abound. No, because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But the Bible says, huh? the Bible, the word of God says, nobody, nobody 
can be justified by the law. And that means you. So you can judge and you can critique and you can bash. But when it's all said and done, we both got to sit with our hand out because we fell short and we need the grace of God. So be careful who you judge and how you judge because the Bible says the same measure that you judge other people. Mm, Jesus, the same measure. God is going to judge you. So if you don't want to give grace and you don't want to give mercy, mm, realize. See, you, you don't you see you're blind. This is why this is why the Bible says pride goes before a fall. Because you think that you're holy. You think you don't need grace. You think that you got it together. You think that you just so saved. But God is looking at some things about your character and your heart. Check this out. Last one. The Bible says that if a man looking at a woman and lusted after her, it's the same as if he's already committed adultery. So when you look at that person who got a divorce and you say, well, you, you need to give me proof. Give me, give me some photos. Give me some evidence that, uh, that your husband was cheating on you. How do you know? That that man wasn't committing adultery in his heart already. Don't say, oh, it's not the same thing. The Bible says it is the same thing. Jesus said it is the same thing. So they might have the freedom to get divorced because that person was committing adultery in the heart. And that's why you can't judge because you can't see what God sees. He sits high and he looks low. But you're trying to judge people. A person from a place of religion and your feelings and your, your limited understanding, your limited knowledge. Oh, we messing up in the church. But we don't like that. Because we like to look at other people and act like we're holier and we're better. Now, we got to have standards, no doubt. We got to have standards. I'm not saying just be loosey-goosey, everybody save, do whatever you want. No, because the Bible says present your body a living sacrifice, but also respect the fact that it's a process. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, but when I became a man, when God began to transform my mind, when I began to take the mind of Christ, hold up, now I slow down before I just speak on anybody. Now, I, I got I to gotta slow down before I just judge somebody, bash somebody, because I don't know what they've been through to get where they are. And maybe if we had to switch places, I might be worse off than them while I'm judging them and looking down at them. I'm just saying, don't be like Job's comforters. Be blessed. Be encouraged.